The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi, right, folks. So a little uh, a while back, I said the Dow is the leader and the others are following. Then there was a period where the Dow, that was in that period uh, going in from mid-February -fe down to the, uh, I think it was, uh, I forgot to put the date, around about the 7th or 13th or so of March. Um, I said, from now on, we might see that the Dow starts to lead again. Well, in a sense, it's been leading. Um, and we're looking at, in terms of chart patterns, this V-shaped pattern in the daily chart has a Dow getting to this midpoint line. And this midpoint line, let me just show you here. We'll go back to some technicals. This is the rectangle that I talked about for quite some time. And I said, if at any stage the Dow starts to break this trend line here, be careful, especially if it's after a peak D, because if it takes it out, we could go to the base of that line, which is around about 32,900, take it out. And if it takes it out, you can go quite a bit deeper, which we did. We went down to 31,429. Now you can see in the left side, right side price time match, I call that bar symmetry, but I'm not taking it from the trough, this low where there's a plumb line. No, I'm taking it from uh, that B, that, that peak B right there um, in mid-March. And then what happened is, it went to peak C, and then for about four sessions, it just stalled. It couldn't get above 33,634, and then all of a sudden today, it popped ab above it. But my contention, rather than say, oh, we're at peak D again, and this is where each other time, uh, we certainly since uh, December, we went to peak D at 34,595. Ho-ho, let's get some short position. I Look, when it did that, and then went to the peak E on the 13th of December, 34,712. I just better show this because I do have people that ask me, could I just keep following through with the technicals just so that they know what I'm talking about. Let me get it there. Let me put this over here. Let me raise that up. And, and let me just explain what I'm looking at here. So in the Chapman wave, we try to identify the lowest low bar, count each successively higher bar as a, a floating letter until it makes a peak. If you don't take out on the pullbacks after they take out the initial starting point, that means you're in a, in a buy mode if you're making higher highs and higher lows. And if the, the buy signal gets upgraded to a buy mode, it means that the, it almost always you'll get to a D. It's hardly ever going to fail, but if it gets to a D, that's where other things can happen. It can recycle, make a brand new uh, instant restart, go to another four peaks high. It's a fantastic technique with a very simple concept, but the application always in any simple concept is not that easy in real time because there are always alternates and you can say, oh, what is this and what is that? Well, all, all I was expecting was that the Dow would get to that leg D. Then I use other particular techniques like the price uh, time match, that's the bar symmetry, etc. So it's accomplished that. But look at this. Look how the technicals were fading at that peak D in December. Look at the retest of the high, slightly high, 34,712. The MACD was already fading. The stochastic was way lower. Look at this peak D at 34,342 in mid-January. And uh, yeah, the technicals were kind of flat. And then the stochastic went over 80% just for a couple of bars. Then boom, went down. Not good. Look at this one at the peak D back in mid-February. Uh, and then the price, the, here the technicals were still flat. The stochastic was even lower. So was the on-balance volume. And then we tanked and we went sharply lower. We used those other techniques of the Chapman Wave, Roman candle, etc. Now what we've got is that the technicals are fabulous. The on-balance volume is a little bit overbought. But that's the only thing here that worries me. And that's the reason why I said no. We're, let's wait. I'm not prepared to do anything. But I did put in a short position, a three times short, a little aggressive there, um, just ready. I put it in, in the uh, in the numbers of the uh, the slots that I have for my trader's corner where we have uh, maybe 11, 11 or 12 
potential positions, but we only actually have an, a few of those that we were trading. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, you can see the Shabby Wave inside track repellent zone, but the week has just begun, and you've got an L in the weekly chart, meaning that the nine period moving average, we still have to wait for Friday's close at four o'clock. But so far, the nine has flipped over the 14 period moving average. The MACD is so close, it isn't there yet, to crossing positive. The on balance volume is still weak, but at least at 52%. Sorry, on balance volume is weak, but rallying. The stochastics at 52% weak, but not bad. So there are signs, and yeah, we are ready to bump up and try to pierce that inside track monthly chart so we can break out above it. But we haven't done it yet. But it's a, at least the Dow's up 65 now, come back from that little bit of a pop and a pullback. It should have been immediately. Uh, 10.20 this morning, we're at 10.12. Uh, at 10.20, we should be down minus 86. And then at uh, about 12.30, we should be down about 135 in the Dow. If this was going to be a one-day pop and drop. So, so far, the day is young, but so far, we're up 59 in the Dow. Now, this is the big issue. The reason why I couldn't get overly bullish is because the S&P had done very well. Technicals are still strong. But the price is stalled. And there's, I don't like prices stalling like that. It's already the, third, the fourth session after that peak D was made, leg D was made. I like 136. One bar, and then you take you move to a new recovery high or recovery low. Um, and in this case, three would be okay. This is the fourth day. It does have me a little worried, but in the weekly chart, it's a nice cup formation. So I shouldn't complain. I'm just saying what I want and what we're getting are just slightly different. Um, and we've got a divergence between the Dow leading, the Dow is up uh, uh, 61, up 16.15%. And the S&P is down 0.03%. And the QQQ, NDX 100 trading vehicle, is down $1.73 at 316.13 after that peaked in. This is the fourth session. Um, and it's down 0.53%. IWM, as I said before, is acting very nicely. It gapped up. Uh, it takes the lead sometimes when the others are faltering. At this particular point, that's all I can say. Now, I had a couple of questions. I'm going to get to them, but I just need to do this gold. Is up 12 at 2016, holding really well, considering what it's done. It's in this rectangle formation. Look, the 9 is way over the 14. Um, the MACD has just turned negative, but still pretty good. The stochastic's gone under 80%. So there's a little bit of weakness here. But if I look at the weekly chart, they're still holding really well. And if you look at silver, I want to put them together. The silver is acting even now a little bit better than gold. It hasn't had that slump as gold had uh, two days ago. So we're looking at gold, uh, silver at 0 0.21 at 25.13. So that reminds me, I got an email. Could I look at? Can you look at MUX, M-U-X? MUX is uh, McEwen Mining. Uh, it's just gone to a leg, F slash C. The only reason why I have the alternate count is just I want to be ready because um, let me just do this and then I'll talk about it as soon as we return. So I like, this is fabulous action. Daily is excellent. The weekly is really good with the stochastic fatter, 91%. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 73, S&P's unchanged. How's the chap? We're looking at McEwen Mining. We'll be back in a moment. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, so we're looking at MUX, which is McEwen Mining. I have it as, um, so this is a PD. This is a, a gray A because it's underneath that PD. So this becomes E slash B. F slash C is still very good. On balance volumes a tad overbought in the um, <clears throat> in the daily chart, but all the technicals are good. So what I would say is I don't know if you are long. I think you're long because we looked at it once before. Um, it was lower down. I think it was in the eights. Now it's at 9.54 of 39 cents, a 4.3 percent. This is really good action. So McEwen Mining, um, I'm looking at it as being really positive. If there is a pullback, I'm going to join a rectangle. Okay, it doesn't have to be there, but I'm just saying this is what I'd be looking at as key support. So if the 8.20 area <clears throat> is going to be key support, if there's, it can't be just be a little pullback in the gold and silver. You'd have to have something. You'd have to probably see the dollar, which is dollar right now, as I say, as I said before, pulling back. Uh, <clears throat> quite deeply now is about 0.46 lower at 102.10. Uh, you would have to see the dollar spike and hold in the 103.35 to 103.62 area to say, hey, that's the, a level that's going to impact gold negatively so that gold can have a bit of a breather after uh, being so, so strong. But at this particular point, the dollar weekly chart says that's going to be tough to do. It's certainly going to be tough to hold any gain. So I think gold is benefiting. So MUX... Now, what would I talk? I think your question would be, uh, where would I go? This this high that was right here in the monthly chart of March of a year ago, <clears throat> uh, it's 9.78. So we are about thirty about thirty cents off that. That would be the first target. But then there'll be a lot of resistance, I think, at the. Uh, 10.20, I bet you would love me for me to say 10.20. Yes, in the 10.20, 10.30 area. But in the meantime, very strong daily, very strong weekly, flat stochastic at 91%. That's what you want to see in a, in a, in a bull phase. And that's what you're seeing in McEwen Mining. Hope that helps you. And another question about what was it? Oh, uh, oh RGLD. RGLD, this is Royal Gold. Uh, thank goodness the notation's still there. It's too has gone to a leg F to the upside. This could be uh, no, it's not an instant restart. It's very close. E slash F, sorry, F slash B. So far, this is also really strong. But I'm looking at 
most of the gold uh, stocks that have done this, this is Royal Gold, a royalty company, trading 139.65 up 2.84. So <clears throat> what I was going to do a little while back, I was going to draw in, uh, I think I did, and then I lost the notation after we do the charts because uh, it, it doesn't get saved immediately as I printed. Well, if it does get saved, if if I shut down accidentally, well, that happened because the power there was a power outage and Newton a, a, a mantle cover blew up or something like that. So and my stuff shut down, even though I've got backup and all that uh, battery, etc. I still have to save it. Then when it came, whatever it happened, it's so. There's a chance that, see, with the falling axe formation, I had this, I, I should have, I wish I had kept it because this is such a nice technique. It says that holding the 200 period moving average in the 112 ish area, look at this. You go up to there, that's the breakout level. <clears throat> and then what you do is, I make this nice and fat just because I'm showing it as a design pattern that we look at. I'll make this uh, blue for now. And then I I just click on and it goes parallel in everything about that line is exactly the same. It gets and then from the trough I go that way. Now I'm making this green, so make it light green like that. There, uh, it doesn't show up. Make it um, some other color. Let me see what color I can make. Yeah. Nah, that's not good. All right, so then what I do is I, I'm going to go back to the green. So that takes you to there, one to one. Once it breaks above it, then I'm prepared to go to the next level and say, now I can go to the trend line. And that trend line says Royal Gold has a chance to go to one, 141. It's trading at 139.69. That would be the one to one Chapman wave. Parallel extension, one to one parallel extension. And the whole idea is it does it in the same number of bars or the same angle, but it does it, it isn't just A to B equals C to D where you've got to wait for the B to C section. This is just almost immediate because you've got a breakout of the Chapman Way falling axe formation, which says if you break out, you can go to the left side highs. If you take them out, do they have a chance of a one to one? So, in answer to the question, of, yes, so the R RGLD, which you're along, uh, I can't remember, was it Adam? I can't remember now who it was. Um, sorry, but uh, I'll try to find it. But in the meantime, it is F slash A in the uh, weekly chart. F says, whoa, be careful. A says, are you kidding? Any pullback I want to buy. But in fact, it's in leg B in the monthly chart. And uh, since the brand new A to B fails, um, A to B fails. Oh, that was a C. Yeah. So uh, let me just do that. I can't just say it. Let me just show you. This is the low back in 2020. I think it was March of 2020, around about 60. It goes, peak A, this is Royal Gold, RGLD. A to B, a, 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 peak A, then peak B. Peak B pulls back sharply and then makes a peak A right there. Why do I say that this is also an A? Because this is the starting point. This, everything above this gets counted as a peak right there. So that means that as long as it's above 60, you've got to count it. So this is above that May, uh, August high of 2020 of uh, 147.64. It goes to 147.70. So my eye picked up that it was just a little bit above. When you do this enough times, your eye can pick that up. So that says any move above this high here of 147.70 goes to 147.71, and that'll be go from a gray B immediately to a D because it picks up that C. So if that helps, um, oh, oh, the question was where was the support? So was it where could I add? I'll do them both. So. This is the same as all the others. There'll be fantastic moves up in the gold stocks, Royal Gold. I would just say to you, if you are looking at it and saying, oh, well, what do I do now? I would say just take a little bit off as money management because we're almost at that 141, one to one area, just money management. And if you want, you could put it back. Look, if you put, you take it off at 139.68 right now. If you put it back anywhere between 134 and 131, 
you're already benefiting by five points, by about 2%. So that's the way I like to look at this. This is what we do in our work, uh, in my trader's call, in my, my opening call in the newsletter. We try to take off because we're, it's horrible to see something go screaming. We've done it occasionally. We even did that once in the dollar. With dollar, we in at 90. It went to 121. We took a little bit off in 96, etc. But we watched it come all the way back and then go rally again. So I'm just saying it's money management says take a little bit off. It's not a big deal. If it goes higher, fabulous. You've still got your core position. But in the meantime, the area between, let's look at it. Give me a yell between 134 and 131. Is that where you want to put it back? Or is that where you actually want to add a huge amount? It just put back a little bit that you take off right now. But so far, all goes actually very well. Dow is now up uh, 89 points. SP is now up 2.54. Bells of Capitite. This is our still looking at the market positively until we get a change of. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, a couple of things before I get to Bitcoin. I want to look at that. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for that. I don't know if it's a compliment or what, but yes, it is now 21 days since uh, Schwab made that round number load, 45 uh, on the 45.00 on the 13th of March. And uh, I'd said that even though everyone's so negative, it should not take out that low by um, within 28 days. Well, anything can happen in the next five, six days, but so far it's held. But is it a buy? We had it as an entry point, but we got out of it. I just said, you know, I... There's just too much going on. There's so many other stocks. This is stuck kind of in a rectangle range. So anyway, yes, yeah, correct. But in the meantime, back to the range, a question came in yesterday, and I didn't get to it about Baba. Uh, Baba is Alibaba uh, call positions. 
I'm just saying that I think that there are other areas that you can go into. I still think it's a little dangerous to go into the Chinese sector. This is Alibaba Group. Uh, it's like the Chinese Amazon is trading down a dollar fifty nine today, ninety nine ninety five. Now I don't know when I, I don't know when the, the the positions are closed because this is April. April will be the uh, third Friday if it's if it's a, a monthly. It's on the twenty first. But if it's this week. It'll be on the 14th. What are we? What are we doing? Am I correct? Yes, it'll be on the 14th. So um, I just think it's stuck. But as a very short-term trade, I'm just going to suggest that if if Bob, Alibaba tests 98.10 support and then breaks that, I'm not sure by Friday. You might get one pop, but that wouldn't be the position that I'd be looking at. And I, I personally would not be looking at these. There are so many other things. I mean, look, take an Amazon itself. Uh, Amazon made a peak D. This is the fourth session. It's weak today again, minus 2.39. I think that this, this is quite serious. So, folks, for any of you who didn't get a chance to listen to um, Tommy O'Brien's show, the morning market kickoff, he was discussing M1, M2, but he was discussing uh, M2 mostly and M3. M3 is just the total amount of money that changes. It's it's the uh, the, the momentum of, of money movement. And I, I remember way back uh, years ago, um, waiting and waiting for that Thursday report on the M1. Then it became the M2, uh, M2 supply. And then M3, just very briefly, and then the, I can't remember which president decided, let's not talk, or, or Fed chairman said, nah, you know what, let's just keep that, we won't mention M3 very often. But M3 is the total money supply. That's just, that's changing hands. This is, to me, that's really important. And if you saw the chart that uh, Tommy showed, hopefully Tom, uh, Tom will show it uh, later on in his show this afternoon, that is the most precipitous decline that I have seen. And that, that was, I think it was M2 that we were looking at because I was busy doing my work then. So I'm not sure that I, I got it correctly. But if that was M2, that is something that you cannot ignore. That means money. So the worst thing in for any market, any country, is to have stagflation where you can't raise prices. Um, there's a kind of a deflation, but you want to raise prices and you can't. So all I'm saying is that there are things out there that could be really worrisome, but that doesn't change the aspect that I'm looking at right now, that if you're looking at the retail sector, and that's really the M M M2 and M3, that's really part of the whole thing. This M2, uh, sorry, this RTH, this is the Van Eck retail ETF, which 20% is Amazon. All I can say is that it's held extremely well when you think about all the news, the negative news, but it really isn't a great looking monthly chart. The weekly chart at 160, 163.70 uh, right now, unchanged, needs to break uh, in April. I can't say May. It needs to do it this month. It needs to be trading. It can't even get there. It's just get there and fail. It's got to trade in the 168, preferably even touch 170 area. That to me will say, hey, that's not bad. But at this particular point, that is not looking at XRT is the other one. That's the one. That's the S&P, equal weighted uh, um, retail ETF. Amazon doesn't distort it. It also doesn't look, actually looks even worse in terms of chart pattern. So I'm not ignoring what's out there, but we are, for subscribers, we are in certain areas that I think can avoid uh, the, uh, the vicissitudes of the market's negativity. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, the question came in, I've, can I find it? Um, about uh, Just to show Fang, Fang is the uh, Diamondback Energy. Nice move up, one-to-one, -one, uh, Chapman Wave uh, plumb line with an, there it is, with a measured move from the left side to the right side, and that's called, there we are, Bar Symmetry says that by the, this is Diamondback Energy, I think, oh, that's oil, that's, uh, I think they're involved in uh, drilling. Uh, that says that by the 18th of April, the high that was made on the 14th of February of 150.73 could be tested. Um, it needs not, if it breaks under 142, that's going to stall that particular aspect. And you've got two 
lines right there and they intersect right there. So that, that's the way it has to be. There's resistance at 146 shorter term. If we can break above that, that'll be good. Okay, next question came in. What was that uh, that we were looking at? Uh, DOCN. So let me just do this. You've got a bunch of uh, um, A to B. You've got a bunch of options involved, but I'm just going to do this as the stock just for the moment, and then I can think about the other aspects. <clears throat> Sitting on the 200 period exponential moving average of 36.55 right now, uh, it's down 10 cents, it made a peak E, it should be pulling back, and it is. It's a peak D in the weekly chart, DigitalOcean Holdings. Um, this is a cybersecurity space. I wouldn't have guessed it from the name. Ocean. Well, I think that's ocean. It's a little far to see from here. They make it in gray. It's really hard. Uh, anyway, so I'm looking at this, and I think it's just kind of stuck. And I think I see your bias is for um, is for the uh, for the call side. I agree only in the sense that it's making the 200 period moving average a magnet. Look how many dozens of times it's been close and is sitting by it. I'm I'm just going to say to you. The further away, if it pulls back, the further away it breaks below 35, the harder it is it's going to get back to this 36, I'd say 36, 46 area. Um, but if it's able to hold for two sessions above 38.30, it's at 36.45 right now. If it's able to hold above that, it could have a retest of the high. And that high, that, I'm sorry, the high that was made at 39, uh, 66 on the 31st of March. So I would look at, I, I, I like your idea. I just think the pullback has been, the last three sessions has been a little bit too deep if it stalled from three days ago and then today it was up at 37.80 to 38.18. I say that is a nice cup formation. So there's a lot of work to be done. The stochastic's down at 61%. The MACD is negative, but that nine is still above the 14 and it's above the uh, 200 period moving average. But that 200 magnet, that that is just to break away either side. And that's at 36.64. So just watch that number. The one, You want to push away from it to the upside. Um, I needed to just quickly check this. I did that, I did that, I did that. Oh, Lily, Eli Lily. Uh, uh, why? This is for uh, one of our tigers. Yes, this almost looks like a gold stock going from the 309 area to 365, almost in a straight line. I'll do that as soon as we return. Eli Lily trading down a dollar at 365.96. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. Uh, just real quick, we went, oh, no, we, I, oh, we've got plenty of time. I didn't realize that there was a last segment. Yes. So I just needed to do this. We'll get back to Eli Lee. But, Jane, the, the Tesla, you remember I said, let's look at it. You said, where, where should I uh, enter Tesla? I just give it another couple of days. I don't mind if it starts to rally from here. It's up 281 and 187.33. If it gets to the 190.70 area, that's a better sign. It says, oh, now I'm going to try to work my way towards the 200 period moving average of 208. But at this particular point, from all the technicals I'm looking at, I think it's worth waiting a little longer. And if, if you do get in, I would only treat that as a trade. The trade could last a day and it could, or it could last six weeks. But I'm not sure that it's an intermediate term trade. But I would look at it again. The next thing is to go back to the Eli Lilly. That's L L Y. So, um, oh, and before I forget, uh, um, uh, Tom O'Brien just uh, typed into the den. Yes, that was M2 year over year. <laughs> I can't believe it's year over year. Anyway, it's like a waterfall. It's like the Grand Canyon. Uh, you know, what, what is that? I think it's in Argentine. There's that uh, waterfall, that one of the tallest waterfalls in the world. Just ooh, anyway, it looks like that. But uh, hopefully he'll, he'll do something and talk about it this afternoon. Uh, but if you want, uh, Tommy Jr. showed it in his show at 9 a.m. Great show because he puts together these technicals, uh, the fundamentals, and ties it to the technicals as well. Nice, nice, nice work. So we're looking at Eli Lilly down 96 cents at 366.04. Um, so just because you asked me about this, I don't know if it's just curiosity, uh, but you have it. Um, I think it was Bill, but uh, all I'm saying is at this particular point, it's a fantastic looking chart in the daily. The weekly has this pattern that says I'm going towards the left side high, and that's where I'm, I'm probably going to stall either just under it, right on it, or just above. And I'll stall, doesn't mean to say I'm oh, coming crashing down, but it just says a stalling motion in the 375s. And that was back in uh, December, uh, November, December, it was in that range. And I've lost it last year. So I'm just going to say to you, for money management, if you want to take a little bit off right here at 366, that's fine. And you could put it back at maybe 352 to 349 or wait. Or you could put it back sooner than that because you're getting, a, you're, you're getting in at a lower price. But my eye says that at some point in the next eight weeks, there'll be a test of the 350 area just above it or just below it. That's where another position might be uh, beneficial if you want to get in. But just on a very short-term basis, it's looking really strong. Everything's good. On balance volume says needs a little bit of a pullback. It just is a little bit of a pullback, not how much. And the weekly chart is still very strong because the MACD just turned up. And the nine-period moving average last week turned positive. So that's a really good sign. So um, nice. Congratulations. I, I don't know where you got in, but congratulations. Uh, next question was... Uh, I think I saw it here. Uh, para, I don't know if that's for me or not. Para, I keep thinking there's a song, Para. Para, Mara, I don't know. Anyway, um, so this is leg D, very strong leg D. Nice breakout, this Paramount Global. Oh, I think I did that yesterday. I said it looks to me like it should go to a leg D. And lo and behold, there it is in leg D. Now, I need to talk about these leg Ds. You see this move above the 200-period moving average? 
Uh, Paris up at 23.23, up 94 cents. This plus, I didn't have a chance to do that yesterday because I had to redo the notations. That should have been, um, the moment it crosses peak C, which is the 200 period moving average, I need to put the up arrow to say the buy signal did go to a buy mode. And from here on, you can see that the weekly chart has broken the inside track repellent zone. But I'm always a little cautious, cautious with this. What I'm going to do now is raise it to that peak over there. And you can see, yes, it's broken out. Uh, the week has just begun. So it's, a, it's just a really good sign. That's a peak C. This is a gray leg B. The moment it crosses there, it picks up the last letter, which is C. So Paramount is acting extremely well. What is very impressive is it's forming this V-shape or cup-shaped formation, and it says this whole area between 21 and 20 is going to be very good support. If, it's, if it takes that out, it gets stuck in a range, and that I, I'd not be looking at it at all. Right now, it's looking pretty good. What was the other thing that I had? I did Baba, I did that. Oh, AN. AN and R. Oh, I forgot to write down who it was. AN is uh, Automation Inc. Auto Sales. Yes, the monthly chart has improved a lot. I'm a little concerned about that peak D that was made just under 160. It went to the 200 period moving average twice. Oh, talking about moving averages this is what I want you to do. I can't remember if I had a question or not. But um, so I'm just saying AN, Automation. I'd be a little careful with this. I. In fact, there was a report that the automobile, this is what uh, Tommy Jr. discussed um, uh, earlier on, saying that the um, dealers are making good money. I had spoken about this, I think it was maybe, I, I would say it's about between nine months and a year ago. What I'd said is I'd found, yes, it was, it was last February when I was looking around, that the automakers are slap, slapping on so many accoutrements that you don't ask for, they're just there. And a majority of people say, ah, once it's there, I'm just going to take it. And if you look at the order sales, you find out that the average price has gone so high, 48 something thousand for the average. I mean, this is amazing that people are paying up. Now, it's fascinating that people are paying up. And here I am looking at tickets in the sports events. Somehow people are paying their hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Someone told me yesterday that they wanted to, they, they, they're going to a Bruins game the uh, next couple of days. Um, it cost them 300 a ticket. Well, if it's 300 a ticket, this is, these are, this is discretionary income. This is not your daily, absolutely, I, I cannot afford it. This means that there are a lot of people out there that do have discretionary income. And that, I think, is the, the mis- diagnosed area of what's going on. And I think there are so many people that also have pulled money out of the market and have cash sitting around. I don't know if this is the cash that they're using or what, but if I look at it, look, look at the way, um, I, I look at the IAI. This is the iShares Broker Dealer and Security ETF. Look how fantastically it went up. And then the whole banking issue just tanked it. But if you look at it this way, those are people buying shares. Those are people that were in the market. And I think that there are a lot of people now, especially if you look at the Bitcoin crowd, who just got decimated. And then out of the blue, it goes from under 20,000. Today, it's at 30,000, hit 30,640. So that whole, and this is what I wanted to say. The reason why I'm going through the circuitous uh, and rather elaborate labyrinth right now of explaining something is that that M2 money supply is going to be, for me, a very important benchmark that I'm going to be looking at for two reasons. One is markets tend to um, discount certain aspects. It sounds terrible. It sounds, remember, this is my right here. This is my dark news cloud cover. And then it just sort of discounts it. And when you think about what's going on from the end of, let's say, November of... Uh, last year, uh, the year before, all the way through to where we are right now. No, this is not. This is the end of last year. Of last year to now, with all the news that's out, we're holding pretty darn well. So will the same thing happen to M2? Will something happen? Or is this really serious that this is going to have a devastating effect at some point? You don't really know, but it's not something you can ignore. I'll be back in a moment.
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So just uh, the Bitcoin is a leg E in the daily, leg E in the weekly, and there's a left side, right side price side match saying the 32 uh, 340 area could be hit by May. Now, isn't it? I mean, it was the end of the world, end of the world, going down to the low. I'm, I'm typing in these numbers, but they do change because it gets smoothed out as a continuous contract uh, in the futures. But in the meantime, that low that was made at, what did I type it in as? Uh, 14,860 uh, back in uh, October. Uh, we're looking at the chance that this Chapman Wave inside track repellent so, sorry chapman wave inside wedge remember it's the wedge that, that go, takes you to the top of the line that by the mid, mid may we could get to the 32,400 but remember it was the end of the world and that's what i'm saying that we don't know how the m2 will uh, result in say six months was well, it's a big big number so we have to give it a lot of time let's say between six months and nine months from now where is it what is it doing so far it's something that you cannot you cannot just dismiss eh, it's not an eh it's a very serious thing so that okay and, and bitcoin has been the favorite because the the bank stocks are actually look at the xlf horrible so before we wrap up let me just do a couple of things where are we and what, what do i want to see it doesn't mean to say that we're going to get it what would i like to see I'd like to see another burst of energy in the Dow. I don't want to see this one uh, pop and drop type thing in a leg D. This leg D has to be a big leg to the upside because you can see what happens when it just makes a nominal 
peak C, at peak C high, above, leg D above peak C. So that's important to me. But I am ready uh, to, 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 to go short at any point. But I just don't see it right now. I see enough strength. So if the Dow, I'm using the Dow just as a benchmark for now, is up 85 or 85 points after 2.10 this afternoon Eastern time, I think it could drag the other indices up. The S&P needs to be up about 11 to 12 points for that to be successful. If it's a sharp pullback, the down minus 60 would be a big negative. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Stay tuned.